We are Harry and Chloe. Over the last three months, we have been overlanding South Africa in our Land Rover Defender camper. Let's give you a quick recap. It's December 2022, and we are packing up our landy, ready to drop it off at the port. This is where it all began. Our adventure started in Durban. With our friends Andy and MH from Expedition Rove, we picked up our landies after nearly two months of them being at sea. The first stop of our journey was to visit some very special people. We were kindly invited by Kingsley Holgate and his partner Sheila to stay with them at their home in Sinkwazi. After an incredible couple of days with Kingsley and Sheila, we made our way into Lesotho. We were tight on time, so could only spend a couple of days in this beautifully mountainous country before exiting Lesotho at the capital city, Missouri, and entering back into South Africa. We had our first glimpse of the African wildlife before then traveling along the N1 highway to the west of South Africa to fulfill some work commitments we had with the Dometic and Frontrunner team within the Cedarburg and Cape Town area. Another reason for us visiting Cape Town was to install a very exciting upgrade to our landy. We had an Alucab pop top roof fitted. The Tankwa was the next stop for us. We met up with some friends and fellow landy drivers for this stretch of the journey. We visited the infamous Tankwa Tented Camp. And this stunning Demond campsite. Next up was the garden route. We met up with fellow overlanders Steffi and Lee from Grizzly and Bear, who took us climbing. We celebrated Harry's 28th birthday by driving in some epic sand dunes. And then reaching a very pinnacle point in our journey. Cape Agulhas, the southernmost point in Africa. We spent some time along the coast before heading inland to join the Route 62 road which was totally awesome. Our next experience was a real highlight for us. We visited the Scotia Safari Game Reserve. And Addo Elephant National Park. Seeing this wildlife in Africa was something we will treasure forever. From Addo, we made our way to the Babiansklief Nature Reserve, an area of outstanding beauty. We highly recommend you visit the Babiansklief if you are in the area. Lastly, we have the Richtersfeld National Park, a mountainous desert in the northeast of South Africa. This was our final stop in South Africa. Want to catch up on our travels so far? Luckily for you, we have documented our whole experience and have a full South Africa and Lesotho collection of videos on our channel. Now, let's get into the video and cross the border into Namibia. So we've just been stamped out of South Africa and now we're just driving across the bridge which is over the Orange River and we're going to be going into the immigration for Namibia and hopefully it will be as quick and easy as it was in South Africa but I doubt it. We may be here a little while, we'll see. officially in Namibia so we went to the customs office and had our passports stamped and checked and everything and then we had a very quick check of the car they didn't really check much they just asked us if we had any firearms and various other questions but it was very brief and then we went through we had to pay our road tax and now that's all done we're on our way to our to fill up the tank with fuel 
and I think we're going to find a camp spot for tonight because we've been driving quite a lot. We're ready to chill out a bit, I think. So after we filled up with fuel at Aranjamund, we headed towards Roche Pinar, which is the closest town from here, hoping to find a camp spot. And on Ireland, there's various wild spots, but due to the mining, the mining areas change quite frequently. Therefore, the camp spots that were available a year or so ago, the routes and stuff have changed, so the wild camping isn't so accessible anymore. So we went into the town and found a lady who said to us about this spot which is a work in progress campsite it's due to open quite soon and she put us in contact with David who has brought us here this place is pretty awesome it's totally off grid but you've got a beautiful bright area and shower toilet uh, situation over there so we're just gonna get a fire going get dinner cooking and relax and not drive anymore which is nice I'm a little vegetable building station. Mm. Not bad. Yeah. It's a lot of greens for us whilst we've been in Africa. Mm. Guys, today we're at Coleman's Cop, just outside of Ludritz in Namibia. And Coleman's Cop is a deserted diamond mining town. After the diamond rush, the place was just deserted and the desert has basically taken over the town. And you'll see as we walk around that these buildings are just filled with sand. And what was once actually a really nice town, these buildings are so impressive, the building workers pretty epic in some of these houses just uh, deserted now and is a national park we missed the tour unfortunately the tour was at 10 o'clock and we got here at half past 10 so we have to educate ourselves a little bit on Coleman's Cop You guys know my keen eye for detail in building work and woodwork especially. And just seeing these like balustrades and banisters, they're obviously all hand carved. The skirting boards are all done really nicely. It's quite impressive. On the 14th of April, 1908, Zacharias Lawella, a railway worker in Namibia, found a diamond in the desert. Within two years, at a rapid speed, a town development took place. Within a few years, Commons Cop became the richest town of Africa and one of the richest towns worldwide. 
From 1911, the town had electric power, luxurious stone houses, a casino, a school, a hospital, a theatre, a ballroom, a sports hall, a bowling alley, a saltwater swimming pool and much more, although less than 400 people lived here. The beginning of the end for Coleman's Cop came in 1928, when huge diamond reserves were found elsewhere, specifically in Orangemund in the southwest of Namibia, where diamonds are still mined to this day. I reckon it could be the school and that's like a changing, changing block, but I could be wrong. The townspeople left in droves, abandoning homes and possessions. By 1956, Coleman's Cop was completely abandoned. The dunes burst through the ghost town's doors and porches, filling its rooms with banks of sand. Today, Coleman's Cop is a ghost town within the Namib desert and has become a major tourist attraction within Namibia, with over 35,000 visitors per year. On our way out from Coleman's Cop, we stopped to take a look at this derailed train. We aren't exactly sure what the cause of this disaster was, Leave us a comment below if you know anything more about this train wreck. <laughs>